Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I am here with another tutorial. I don't do these very often, but I did get a request from one of the commissioners in one of my baseball leagues to do a tutorial on the Strat Draft system, which is used for uh, baseball, Stratomatic Baseball League drafts. Now, um, I think that the purpose for this is twofold, because many, many guys that are in leagues do know how to use the strat draft. That isn't as much the issue as it is people actually using the strat draft. So I am going to try to show you how simple it is and how easy it is and how accurate and reliable it is so that if you are one of those people who doesn't always use strat draft and you know who you are you can use it and you can feel comfortable you now that brain that you gave me was it hans delbrooks no ah. good uh would you mind telling me whose brain I did put in? And you won't be angry. I will not be angry. I have probably been in the equivalent of, I would say, 15 seasons worth, you know, because some t leagues I have like Strat Draft, you know, we use Strat Draft in two or three leagues. I've probably been somewhere in the equivalent of 20 seasons where I used Strat Draft or, or was required to use it. And I would have to say that I have used Strat Draft as far as the time of the entire draft probably 99.9999999 infinity nine percent of the time i rarely 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 ever do not use it um i think i recall only once that i didn't use it and that was last year and i didn't use it last that one time i didn't use it i wanted to try to make a point to everybody else in the league about how stupid it was and how you know bad it was that i was holding everything up the problem with that is it doesn't work because the only people that are mad at you are the people who um use it all the time like me those are the only people that would have gotten mad at me. the people who don't use it all the time wouldn't care they'd say okay yeah he hasn't made his pick yet so i'm going to walk you through the process now um i have a league I am in a league where the draft is going on right now. I'm going to show you my draft board. You know, we're in round whatever, six, seven, something like that. So I don't really care if, you know, other people are seeing what my draft board is, you know, like in the league. So um, let's come down here. My name in that league is Bobmaster66. And then you type in your uh, password. And then it should take you right in to the uh, to the draft site take it a little longer than i would have liked i didn't realize it would take this long and so now here you go so now we're on the first page right here this page is the first page it'll take you to this is the page that shows your current three rounds that are um, on the draft that are being used right now so we've completed round five, we're almost done with round six, and then we're going to go on to round seven. Now, um, if you can see with um, the, uh, you, if you want to set up your draft board, what you do is you go to front office, then you go to my office, then you go to my profile. And when you click on that, it will take you to your your uh, profile page, which is where you can set up who you draft. 
Now, as you can see up here in the corner where it says auto draft, that is check marked. If I uncheck mark this, you can see everything, the, the numbers for the players, the numbers that are listed as the player's pick number go gray. This means that you are not in auto draft. So when it comes up to you, the draft will stop and you would have to make a manual pick if this is what your board looks like. But if you click on that, now you can see the numbers are dark in dark black font. That means you are in auto draft. So now here's how my um, board is set up currently. And this is, this is the part that needs more explaining than the simpler way, which I will show you in a minute. But you can see that my draft board is set up. Now you've got 30 slots. I think it's 30 slots here. And I don't even have the bottom five slots um, uh, checkmarked with players. I don't have it filled with players. I only have 25. But you can see I've got it set up so that what the computer will do is you pick a number here. So I pick two. So what it says here is first draft a maximum of two players from this group. So what this what the uh, computer will do for me is I have four players here. As long as there are at least two of these guys in this box, it is set up to draft two from this um, group of four. And if, like I said, if it gets whittled down to two, then it's down to two. Now, it will, I want to point out, it will stop if um, I would stop the draft in this particular case if all four of these guys were picked or if there was, <coughs> excuse me, or if there was only one left, then it would, it would pick the one. And then when it came back around to my turn in the draft again, and like the last remaining guy had been picked before that pick, then it would stop because this box would be empty and there would be nobody in it. And it would not go on to the next one. I don't think, I don't think it would go on to the next one. Maybe it would. I'm not sure. It might actually go on to the next box. So that I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not too sure about it. Actually, it might. It probably would go on to the next box then. So um, you're saying, so So what I'm saying here is I want Brandon Crawford, I want CJ Crone, Miguel Cabrera, or Daniel Vogelbach. I want two of those guys. If they're all taken before it gets down, around to my pick again, then the machine will say, well, okay, they're all taken, so we're going to go on to the next one. He wanted one of those four guys, but they're all taken, so we're going to the next one, and now he's going he's got it set up so that he wants to take two of these guys. So, um, so that would be, you know, what I would do. So let's say that um, Crone and Cabrera are available to me when I pick the next two times, my next two picks. The, and that Brandon Crawford goes to somebody else. So then the machine says, okay, and it takes, it always takes the highest rated player in your box. So the highest one up is the next guy up. So then it would say, okay, well, Crone and Crone is available, let's say for this next round, round seven. It would say, okay, Crone's available. He wants Crone, I'm taking Crone for him. Then in round eight, it would say, all right, he wants Cabrera. Cabrera's still there. I'm going to take him for it. Now let's say it gets to round nine and Vogelbach is still there. It doesn't matter. It's going to go on to this next one because it's going to say, I've already taken Crone and Cabrera for him. And he only wanted two of those guys. So now we're moving on and now he wants two from this group. And the way I have this set up is this is like my DH or, well, Crawford, I wouldn't use as a DH. I would put him at shortstop, but that would move somebody else to DH. But these three guys I would use as a DH. So this is my DH pick box. Um, and I would, um, I would still want um, two of those guys. And, um, 
So I would set it up so that it would pick two of them. And then, and, and they're all DHs. See, this is probably how you want to set it up. You want to say, I want two from this group. If you say you want two or you want one from this group, it's probably got to be, you would want it to be the same position because otherwise there's really no sense in saying this. So you would say, all right, this is my DH pick box. I want two from here. Then you go down here and then I tell the machine, all right, now I want two of these guys and these are all relievers. So then the uh, computer will say, okay, he wants two of these relievers. I'm gonna get two of these relievers for him or I'm going to get none of them if they're all picked. And then I would move on to the next box. Now you can see the next box is my catchers, my backup catchers. And so I only want one because I have a starting catcher. So I'm telling the computer, just take one of these guys if they're left. And then the computer moves on to this next bunch. And now, as you can see in the next bunch, I've got five and five checked. So this means I don't care which one of these guys, you know, because they're all mixed in. You've got infielders with reliever starters, with um, reliever, with a second baseman, with a first baseman, with a reliever. They're all jumbled in together because I need them in any kind of, it doesn't really matter any kind of order, whoever's left. So you can see that it's set up like this. Now, if you're at the start of the draft and you just wanna get the best player available, in that case, I would have all of these boxes filled and I would make all of these boxes say draft the top five. So you can see right here. Draft the top five, draft the top five, draft the maximum of five. And so the computer would just go right down this list, straight down this list, and would take the highest rated available guy. And once you do that, once you've set it up the way you want it, <clears throat> then you hit submit. When you hit submit, you're going to get this little sign up here that says stratdraft.com uh, says accepted. When you see that, you know that the the draft um has been your your draft list here is ready to go and it's ready to pick for you and now we're going to set it back to what i had it at two and two and one and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to hit, hit submit <clears throat> and now it says accepted so now my draft board is back to the way i originally had it and so that's how it is. And then the way you type the players in is in this box, you just type in whatever numbers next to their name. Like Matt Joyce has S718 next to his name, wherever he is. And so here are the numbers. These are the numbers you would type into the box in the order that you want to pick the guy. So um, as you can see, it's set up so that it can take any number of guys just right in a row or it can take a shortstop for you, then a DH, then a relief pitcher, then a starting pitcher, if that's how you want to do it. It's very convenient. It's very easy. It's very accurate. And it will do that. And so this is, and this is why I set it up and I can just leave it and I don't have to worry about it. Because I know I want two guys from this list before I want anybody from this list doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter who takes who. Before me, if there's at least two of these guys left, I want them before we move on to the relief pitching because I have pretty good relief pitching so far in the draft. So I'm just going to show you a couple of other pages. I wanted to really show you the, the draft though because the draft board because that's the most important thing on here. But if we go back to home, And then we go to front office, and then we go to my office, and then we go to my roster. Here is where you can see your roster. And this will include the people that you have um, picked in the draft so far and the people that you had coming into the draft. And it shows what positions they play, which is also convenient, and what their ratings are. Um, so that's, that's, that's pretty convenient. Now we go back to home again. 
and then um, we go to front office and we go to now let's go to draft views we'll go to draft views and then we will go to um, let's go to my draft see what that shows okay so now in my draft it shows the players up here that you've already picked and then it shows your auto draft and it says it's on so you can see here i can tell that my auto draft is on and then here it tells how many picks you have and in what round um so um you can see we're going around seven and i'm the eighth pick in round seven and so I can tell how many more picks. I can tell I haven't picked in round seven yet, so I can tell how many more picks I have by just looking at this chart. So that's a quick overview of the auto draft. Now, as you can see, and in my opinion, and I've been, again, I've been using this, I use it 99.999, take it out to infinity percent of the time. Uh, there is no, I'm going to log out right now here. I don't think that there's any excuse for not using the auto draft. There just isn't. You should use the auto draft. It's convenient. It moves drafts along. People don't get held up. Whatever excuse anybody ever says, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I've heard people say, well, I was working all day. All right, you were working all day. So before you went to work, you should have put 30 guys into your draft board and had them ready to go on auto draft. And then while you were working, if even three rounds went by, probably everybody in that draft board would not have been taken for three rounds. And then you would have gotten three guys ranked as, you know, from the way the highest that you wanted down to the lowest that you wanted and uh you would have made three picks by being at work and not even looking at your draft board um you know people say stuff like well i wanted to wait and see who somebody else picked why why do you need to wait and see why who somebody else picked if you remember going back to my board i had Two, I want two DHs, first baseman type guys in that top slot. So that's who I want. I don't care if you go out and you take Babe Ruth. I still want two guys from that first baseman DH um, box. Doesn't matter. That's not and who anybody else picks is not going to affect my pick in that scenario. I've heard people say that it's. Um, you know, I mean, I can't address this specifically because it's a very vague comment, but I've heard people say that it's difficult to use. And that's why I made this video to show you that it is really not difficult to use. Um, but some people, you know, a monkey has to crawl up their butt with a wire brush before they'll use this thing. And I don't know what they're afraid of. I mean, in theory, if everybody, if every single person was like me and they put an auto draft in and they set it on automatic and they had 30 guys in it, you would reel off about five, five or six rounds of picks in about 30 seconds. And then there would come a point where because everybody had done that, that there were a lot of empty um, auto drafts and then people would have to reload their auto draft. But like five or six rounds would go by in 30 seconds. And then you just have to reload the thing. So, um, yeah, I don't, so I don't, I really don't care what excuse you can, you can dream up. There's no excuse. Everybody should be able to use this. There isn't an excuse why you shouldn't be able to use it. You shouldn't have to say anything other than yes. I will load my auto draft and I will click on auto draft. That's all it really has to happen. And you make it convenient for everybody else in the league because people sometimes they don't have a lot of time for a draft. And if everybody was using it or 90% of the league was using it, the draft would be over very quickly. It could be over in one night if everybody used it. Um, 
and and that's another excuse i've heard people say well i don't have the time to do the draft so so check the auto draft and do it then you don't need to have the time to do anything you can go out and go shopping you can go to the movies you can go to the ballpark i mean you can't go to the ballpark now because there's a virus stopping everybody from doing anything but in general you can use it and set it and leave it alone and just leave and do whatever you want whatever your heart desires and the machine will pick for you so that's my tutorial on the strat draft it's the main things that you need to be concerned with it's not every single thing i wasn't going to go through all of it because we're already up to 20 minutes but uh you get the uh idea and so i just want to remind everybody subscribe to the channel ring the bell send it to whoever you think might be interested in it send it to people who don't use auto draft all the time here's my contact information and that's the same thing you got the um email down there twitter instagram but for right now that's it for me sportsman z bob zalke signing off